Welcome to the 2-0 and o edition of Between the Lines presented by Continental Diamond. I'm Gabe, that's Ben, and after a 23-17 victory over, over the San Francisco 49ers, Ben, we are very pumped for what the future looks like for this Minnesota Vikings team moving forward. There, there are so many stats, so many milestones. Uh, one that stands out to me is that uh, the 49ers still have not won a game yeah. in Minnesota since 1992. Yeah, when eight, you, eight games, right? That's eight games. Yeah. Eight, when you think about this game in particular, like w where do you start? Uh, where do I start? I'll tell you, I'll, I'll start with how I felt during the game. Okay. The Vikings, once again, mess with my emotions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was like a time where like, we're going to blow these guys out. Yep. Like this is not even going to be a contest. Yep. It's like this is just an extension of what we did last week. And then we sort of like let them back in. Yeah. And the Niners did what they normally do. They like turn the clock out and they kind of grind you down and they make some plays. They make you make make mistakes. And I'm like, they made it a game. And, you know, now that we're on the other side of this and the game's over, I mean, I loved the ride. The ride was fun. It was emotional, <laughs> but the ride was fun nonetheless. And I'm just so happy that the Vikings showed resilience, you know, yeah. and being 2-0. I mean, that resilience, I mean, I, I just don't want my hair to look like yours. So <laughs> that's why I got mine braided. So it's one less thing I got to worry about. But thinking about just the resilience that this team has, the one thing that stands out to me is the final Vikings offensive drive. Yeah. No Justin Jefferson. No Jordan Addison. No TJ Hawkinson. I mean, I can yep. keep going. No Aaron Jones. Yep. Sam Darnold, 4 or 5, 41 yards, three third down conversions on that drive. What do you make of his play today? Um, I actually talked to him about that in the locker room, mm. and and he said, you know, I brought up all those same points. <laughs> and I was like, you guys sealed the game with all basically all these backups. Yep. And he's like, I don't even think about it. Mm. He's like, that's, you know, that's just the confidence that I have in the guys are gonna go, that are going to go in there. He's like, I expect them to just run the offense as they know how to run it. And and so, you know, in the way he said it, like you can tell it was very genuine. You know, mm. I don't think that he thought like, oh, man, we don't have these guys, yeah. these key guys. You know, we can't run this route because we don't have J.J. doing it. You know, he just knew that if you're in the huddle, you belong to you belong there yeah. and you deserve to be there. And we're, I'm going to trust you to make go out and make the play. And um, that was his mindset. You know, I'm just I'm so impressed by how he just is so calm mm. and so confident and you know, before the game, during the game, after the game, he's the same guy. Yeah. He's a true pro. Yeah, he, he had a fairly clean pocket today also, and I feel like their running game helped that. When you have Ty Chandler going for over 80 yards, Aaron Jones having a great day on the ground, that ultimately affected how this Minnesota Vikings team uh, played. What do you make of the run game today? Uh, with Christian Derrissaw, who I talked to, he said today was the first time that he did a pull block yeah. Since he was in college. No way. The first time that he's ever pulled from left tackle. You know what? what? In big games like this, you just got to pull some some creative things out, I right? I love it. I love it. Put some, tape, put some stuff on tape that they've never seen before. Yep. Um, you know, going back to last year, you look at this Niners defense in the regular season. In the games that they won, they mm. held teams to 65 yards on average mm. rushing. In the games they lost, they gave up 115 or more. Yeah. So, you know, that's one of those things going into the game. Everybody knew that. We got to run the ball on these guys, but it's the way that we did it. Last year, we did a lot of the same things. We attacked the edges of this defense last year. We come out today and we kind of do the same thing. You, you can press the ball down at the line of scrimmage tight, yeah. but then trust your guys to kind of bounce it on to, onto the outside. And and uh, we did a fantastic job of just kind of exposing, I think, how greedy their, their edge guys can get. Yeah. You know, their edge guys really want to get after the quarterback. And even when they have a blocker in front of them, you know, there are times where they just they want to sneak it back mm -hmm. inside and, and not be gap sound. Yeah. And so we took advantage of that. We knew that. And we just kind of grinded out 146 yards on the ground. But as we move to the defensive side of the ball, uh, just another great performance. I mean, we only gave up 17 points. 14 of those points came off of turnovers. Yeah. What do you make of this Brian Flores-led defense that has 10 sacks in the first two games of the year? It's just getting better and better. Mm. And, um, you know, I, I talked to Stephon Gilmore as well, and, and he was just saying, like, we just – we give so many offenses so much to look at. Mm. And the way that, that B-Flow calls the game, it's – you know, it's a lot of disguises. It's a lot of blitz. It's a lot yeah. of blitzes out of different looks. And so it, it really makes the offense have to put their thinking caps on, and that's not really what they want to do. Mm. They don't want to have to overthink about what the defense is doing, but, you know, that's that's the, the chess match that, that B-Flow gives these offenses. And, and then, you, then you inject the fact that we yeah. have – a very athletic group up front. Yep. And we have guys in the back end that can cover. Now, there were some plays in the middle of the field that I think 
We're just going to give them those plays yeah. because we're just going to make them earn the yards, kind of a bend but don't break approach. And by doing so, we go out and get five sacks, seven mm. TFLs, mm. you know, get an interception. Mm. I mean, mm. so the more that they were on the field, the more opportunity we had to make plays as well. I mean, you talk about all those, those sacks that we have on the quarterback. Four of those sacks came from defensive linemen or outside linebackers, however you want to put it. And Blake Cashman had a sack today. If you're a linebacker like Blake Cashman and you have all those guys in front of you making plays, what does that do for you? Like, how free are you playing at that point? It makes everybody say, I want to get mine. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want it on the party. Like, I want a sack. Hey, I, we can't just have these defensive linemen get all the sacks. Come on, B-Flow. So the thing I loved about his sack, I mean, which, by the way, Cashman to me was the game M MVP. Agreed. Um, I, Great interview, defense, by the way. Um, he was fantastic. But on that particular sack, what we called when I was playing, it's called a bumpy technique. Mm. So your idea as a blitzing inside linebacker is to attack the inside shoulder of that offensive tackle. And you, you are sort of the sacrificial lamb. Mm. You, you go attack that guy, and by doing so, the defensive end now can, can come underneath. Mm. So you're not trying to necessarily get to the quarterback. Okay. You just want to attack him and hit that shoulder. But by doing so, you sort of ricochet off that guy. And there's nobody there to account for you. So if you get a good enough hit and you attack that guy like you did Trent Williams mm. to knock him off his feet a little bit, yep. he can't rebound. He can't re re uh, rebalance himself and engage. He just bumps off the guy and makes the play. So it's it's one of those things like you're doing something that's supposed to benefit somebody else, yep. but if you do it the way it's supposed to be done, you'll actually get the sack. I mean, that's just the the level of. I guess <laughs> expertise that Brian Flores has when it comes to orchestrating this defense. We knew going into this game, if Brock Purdy threw the ball more than the 49ers ran the ball, that was a recipe for success. The 49ers threw the ball 36 times today. They ran the ball 25 times. Mm -hmm. Debo Samuel, two rushes, negative 10 yards. Granted, Jordan Mason did have yeah. a 100-yard day, but you live with those results. When you, when you think about just the, the level of game flow from this defensive uh, scheming, how would you make sense of that? Well, again, I think that you can play that bend but don't break as long as, and you can be patient in that, as long as you have confidence in your offense. Yep. And um, you saw what happens when Brock Purdy, who I think is a, is a fantastic yeah. quarterback, um, when, you, when you make him throw the ball that many times, you know, that, that Jihad Ward fumble recovery, which they, what they called it, which is kind of weird because it never really hit the ground and it's an interception, is a fumble. Either way, yep. we get the takeaway, that ball just flat out slips out of his hands. Mm. Nobody hits it. It's just... It's those things when you, when you put a guy out there that's running for his life, yep. that feels the pressure of, of this defense, mistakes are going to happen. Mm. And so I think a lot of it is um, the bend but don't break attitude and the defense having the confidence that, hey, we'll get a stop yeah. eventually, and then we're going to trust our offense to put some points on the board. Uh, let's, let's wrap this thing up. And going into this season, a lot of people did not believe in this Vikings team. I mean, a lot of people had this Vikings team maybe going 1-1 one one or 0-2 to start the year. We're 2-0 and right now, no matter how you look at it, and it's been in really impressive fashion. What do you make of this team right now, this part of the season? They didn't listen to anybody outside the building. Um, they knew that they had, a, they had a really talented team. They knew that they, had, they know that they have talented coaches. Everybody obviously knows that it comes down to Sam Darnold and the quarterback play. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's such a great supporting cast. We all had confidence that the additions they made on defense were going to come to fruition, and that's happening right now. Yeah. So um, I think for them, it's just going out there and executing the game plan. Mm. And as, as long as they don't try to get a, uh, over their skis and make stupid mistakes and get too risky and try to do too much, this is the type of team, this, these are the type of performances that we can expect. I love that, Ben. Look, we're 2-0 and next Sunday. The Houston Texans come in town, and we're looking forward to going 3-0. and But right now, the Vikings are going to bask in this victory. The first time since 2016 the Vikings have started the season 2-0. and and I'm so looking forward to the rest of the year. So my, for my guy, Ben Lieber, Ryan O'Neill behind the camera. My name is Gabe Henderson. Thank you guys again for tuning into this edition of Between the Lines presented by Continental Diamond.